Public school or private, student debt is steep. My name is Sarah Nispel. I'm a sophomore at McAllister College. I'm here today not for myself, as I come from an affluent family, but for my best friend who can't be here. My best friend was one of my primary influences in getting involved with MPERG and economic justice in Minnesota. It's amazing to see the way she builds community in the Twin Cities, um, and, but she is heavily burdened by student debt. She nearly had to drop out of school on more than one occasion, and she has been taking four credit internships rather than classes to decrease her tuition costs. She is very close to her parents, but for a period of a few months she avoided calling them because she was afraid their money struggles might come up. Financing her, her education with as few loans as possible put a huge stress on her family, which made her feel so anxious and guilty that some nights she could not focus on her homework or even her work in the community which she loved. It was heartbreaking for me to see her in tears after conversations with her folks, or so stressed that she became physically ill. She frequently feels bad about going out to eat or going to a movie on weekends because of the financial and emotional strain her college education is putting on her family. And she hasn't even begun to pay off her loans yet. She is a talented, kind, and passionate organizer, and I'm afraid that in her quest to find a job with a salary high enough to pay off her loans, she will have to sacrifice working with a nonprofit or a community organization to improve the lives of Minnesotans. This would be a devastating loss, both to her and to our state. Today, I'm asking our legislators not to let that happen. Help ease the mental and emotional anguish caused by the undue financial burden of student debt. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Now let's hear from Representative Dorholt. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, thanks for bearing this burden in the name of higher education. I'm Zachary Dorholt, state representative from 14B in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where I'm home to the largest Minsk school, St. Cloud State University, where I wrote a check for tuition in 1999 for 1200 bucks. Uh, by the time I had graduated, that price had doubled. Um, you look up at these, these numbers here from four-year degrees and you ask yourself well, what about the folks who want to go on for master's or doctorate and people aren't because of this um, every word I heard in high school was all I got to do is get into college you know and, and everything will be great um, as we're learning now it's it's sure we have a great education in a state that's known as, as what put us on the map um, but these things are holding us back uh, the national level you hear you've heard a lot about the housing bubble uh, if you start looking at these numbers, we might be concerned about the student loan debt bubble. Uh, that might be the next one we face here. Um, as vice chair of higher ed, I've got to hear a lot about, a lot of questions. What can we do? What can we do about the cost of college? And what we're learning is some hard truths that it, there's, there isn't as much as we would like to do, it isn't available to keep those costs down. The costs aren't going to go away. Um, so this is one thing, one tool that will help relieve one of the top burdens we have um, here in Minnesota for everyone in this room, for the folks in high school who want to go to college, for everyone who's hearing those, you got to go to college to get a good job. Um, this is one tool um, that we can move Minnesota forward with and help ease one of the an unnecessary burden if we're going to keep Minnesota uh, human capital as our number one um, priority because it is our number one asset and I would hate to see us lose that uh, just because we can't do anything to help students um, keep this problem at bay so thank you for the support and uh, keep keep talking thank you representative Dorholt uh, now let's hear from Heather Johnson a senior at North High School My name is Heather Johnson and I am a senior at North High School in North St. Paul. I'm here today in support of Opportunity Minnesota. I am considering the U of M Twin Cities as well as other institutions across the country as I look towards my graduation in May. But my education will not stop after a bachelor's degree. My current career path is to pursue biological sciences and continue my education into the medical field. It's daunting to think about the enormous pile of debt I will have incurred after pursuing further education into a master's degree and eventually a PhD. This policy would be an incredible incentive for choosing to stay in Minnesota after obtaining my degrees. 
I am the youngest of three daughters in my family and have not yet started my college education, and my parents have already incurred over $40,000 in college debt. This is an enormous burden for my family to bear, and it is only getting bigger. My family is in the fortunate position of being able to take on this debt. However, I can say the same is not true for many of my peers, whom are choosing to forego a higher education for employment straight out of high school. My parents, as they graduated college, had little to no debt. The same is certainly not true for my generation. I want to stay and live in this state both for my education and future employment. I understand the cost of higher education is not going to go away, but the effects of this bill could help me achieve my academic goals while allowing me to stay in the state that I love. I want this not only for myself, but for my peers and future high school graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, now let's hear from Vincent Toulouse, also a senior at North High School. My name is Vincent Toulouse, and I'm also a senior at North High School in North St. Paul. I'm also here today to test, uh, testify in support of Opportunity Minnesota. I'm one of the peers that Heather just spoke about, and I'm considering not going to college due to the overwhelming debt. Higher education debt is a huge barrier for all students, and I'm certainly no exception. I already have two sisters that have graduated with an enormous debt, one of which owes $24,000 alone in her undergraduate year. My family is a middle class family that already has a hard enough time providing for us as is, which means that if I were to go to college, I would certainly have to take out a loan in order to do so. My parents are hard workers and immigrants to this country. They never had the opportunity that I have to get an American education. I want to take that opportunity that they never had, but at the same time, there are other opportunities that wouldn't burden me with this debt. The cost and debt of higher education is a real barrier for me in considering any other paths. If this bill were to pass, I can tell you it would directly influence my decision to get a college degree. I would go to college, and I urge the Minnesota legislator to pass Opportunity Minnesota for myself and all those like me who wish to pursue their dreams. Thank you, Vincent. Um, and now we'll hear from Brian Daly Arndt, a junior at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Thank you, Emma. All right, now there are several uh, ways to address the issue of higher education debt. To be sure, we need to return to the commitment in state statute 135A01. Adhere to the two-thirds investment from the Minnesota, from the state of Minnesota for our public institutions that provide access to an affordable higher education and buy down tuition. But as you've heard, <clears throat> we are facing a challenge that is much direr and requires innovative solutions. Opportunity in Minnesota, Senate File 997, and House File 1097 is the innovative solution to this challenge. It provides higher education debt relief and is at the same time a workforce development tool. It is, evidence, <clears throat> is evidenced by the report we are releasing today and the personal stories of the high school students before us. Policies like Opportunity in Minnesota have proven to increase college enrollment, particularly for low and middle income students, and build an educated workforce that can drive the economy less hindered by debt. So how does Opportunity in Minnesota work? Opportunity in Minnesota provides a tax credit for student debt payments made during the prior year. Any individual with debt from federal student loans is eligible to claim the credit as long as they graduate from a higher education institution in Minnesota and work in the state following graduation. Employers who offer debt payment assistance as a benefit of employment are also able to claim those payments as a tax deduction. The total credit allowed is limited each year to the lesser of the principal and interest payments uh, made in the prior year or $4,000 and can be claimed for no more than 10 years. The credit is also targeted to benefit those who need it most. As income goes up, the amount the credit an individual can claim goes down. In the report we are releasing today called Opportunity Minnesota uh, and Economic Analysis, we can, uh, was conducted by applied economist at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, named Elton Mikarezzi. His analysis indicates that there are $800,000 uh, for, $847,133 in social benefits and $123,865 in fiscal benefits to the state of Minnesota as a result of inducing just one high school student to attain a degree. That's a total of a nearly a million dollars in benefits per student. 
This is a critically important aspect of this policy. Uh, while we recognize that this program has upfront costs, the analysis indicates that it will pay for itself if we can induce just 2% of high school students, or high school graduates, or 12% of the college cohort each year to attain a higher education. The inducement required for Opportunity Minnesota to offset the fiscal costs of the state is feasible according to the existing studies and economic literature on higher education debt redu reduction programs. One of the clear advantages of this policy approach is that it rewards those who graduate and then stay in Minnesota to contribute to our workforce. In that way, it is a merit-based tax cut provided to the newest members of the middle class as they achieve a higher education. This afternoon at 3 p.m., the bill gets a, its first hearing in the Senate Higher Education Committee, um, where we will hear from more students about their stories of student debt, hear again from those amazing high school students on the barriers of the cost of college of higher education imposes on our state's future leaders, and, and hear directly from Elton Mikareji as he expounds upon the economics analysis he's conducted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. Now let's hear from Senator Claussen. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today to speak in support of uh, Senate File 997, Education Opportunity Credit. And as a member of the Senate Higher Education Committee, uh, we have heard from Minsky, we've heard from the University of Minnesota, we've heard from private colleges, we've heard from uh, for-profit colleges, and I've heard from many of the students that are uh, here today in my office about the high costs of tuition and what the state of Minnesota can, can do about that. The one thing that, you know, has been stated here is, is the high uh, loan rates that people are graduating from college. It's around $30,000 on average here in the state of Minnesota. And yet we also have people that are graduating uh, from professional schools in our state where it's well over $100,000 that they owe. And that's a real problem. Uh, we have the fifth largest percentage of graduates carrying student loan debt in the nation. That's 71% of our four-year graduates. And the other issue that's very concerning is across the nation, student loans are now over $1 trillion that are owed to federal agencies. And we have a problem in that within two years, about 10% of the students are defaulting on their loans. They can't pay those loans and at the same time, <coughs> excuse me, uh, buy homes and do the other things that's so important as you, you move into adulthood. And I believe we need to send a message that higher education is a good investment, and as a state, we are willing to help students to guarantee their future and the future of our state. It's really an investment in the future and will ultimately determine the quality of life that we'll have here in the state of Minnesota. Senate File 997 will allow post-secondary graduates to purchase homes, to make investments on their own for their future, and also to purchase more items in the marketplace, resulting in increased economic activity. So uh, again, it's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning, and I'm looking forward to this afternoon when uh, we will be presenting to the Higher Education Committee. Thank you. <laughs> 